All right. Uh, hello, and hello and welcome to Beginners Academy. Um, we have uh, talks for uh, beginners and and returning hams. Um, uh, tonight we're going to do a heads up for the winter 2023 <laughs> winter field day uh, at the uh, end of this month. Uh, my name is Greg in 4 KGL. Okay, uh, winter field day is one of two two of two events uh, where you're uh, encouraged to uh, operate from outdoors with with a idea that it's uh, adverse conditions and it uh, should help you with the emergency preparedness from a ham radio perspective and uh, <clears throat> the traditional field day is in June. Uh, it's ARRL field day. And people complain, it, particularly in Alabama and Florida, about how hot it is. So the answer to that is winter field day, which is the last full weekend of uh, January. So uh, uh, when I was a teen, which was long ago, um, and a ham, I uh, uh, particularly enjoyed doing a uh, field day with uh, some of my friends. And uh, so I still uh, love to do it. And uh, it's, it's very popular, uh, both uh, the June field day and winter field day are are very popular. And uh, so we'll uh, do some highlights on Winter Field Day and uh, maybe uh, you could put some plans together. Uh, Winter Field Day is um, mostly an HF activity, high frequency, but uh, uh, actually you can also make contacts on VHF, but but the bulk of the activities on HF. And um, even if you have a technician license, um, uh, you can operate on um, 10 meters. Uh, also, you could operate with a group that has a, a general or extra class as, as a control operator. So, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> for a lot of people, it's uh, how they uh, kind of break into uh, HF operating and, and kind of what we call contest operating. So just from many perspectives, Winter Field Day is a great opportunity for beginners and returning hand. Uh, if you visit a group operating or, or an individual, you're going to see the whole setup, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, they'll let you make some contacts. Uh, this year, uh, it's uh, January 28th, 29th. It's 24 hours, and uh, starting at 1900 UTC uh, Saturday until 1900 UTC Sunday. Uh, and I got an extra uh, CST there, but uh, I believe it's one o'clock CST. Um, and uh, the rules are on the Winter Field Day site, uh, winterfieldday.com. And Winter Field Day is sponsored by the Winter Field Day uh, Association. Uh, it's not a, a double RL event. And we're going to cover a lot of the rules, but it uh, we won't cover all the rules. So uh, you'll want to definitely read the rules at uh, the Winter Field Day site. So uh, where could you operate Winter Field Day? Uh, if you want to get outside, you could uh, 
reserve a campsite at a state park. Uh, uh, you could actually go to a state park or um, and operate during the uh, daytime. Um, uh, I uh, reserve a campsite because I can operate overnight, but <laughs> it's nice to be able to operate overnight, but uh, you could also just go set up and operate during daylight. Um, you might have a, a property or a friend that has some property where you could, could operate overnight. So the campsite would be kind of rough in it if it's uh, really, really cold. Um, another option is a cabin, renting a cabin, or maybe you, you have one. Um, there's the rules have been uh, slightly revised and uh, they say you can operate mobile uh, from a vehicle or uh, I called it mobile stationary. It might be uh, a trailer, uh, EOC trailer or something like that. Um, so they made that into a category. But um, uh, Winterfield Day uh, allows you to operate from home also. So um, a lot of people do that. So uh, there's many opportunities on uh, uh, operating. Uh, your gear is, of course, uh, usually a HF radio. And, you know, any radio, HF radio you have is probably the radio to use. Uh, you will need a power source um, if you're uh, out in the field. Um, we'll talk more about that. Obviously, an antenna. So these days, uh, Parks on the Air is very popular. So, um more and more people are taking their radios to parks in the field and um, uh, <clears throat> so i think that's going to help the turnout for winter field day <laughs> uh, of course you want some uh, eats uh, uh, and uh, warm clothing if you're out in the elements uh, the bands for winter field day. Well, I'll just go through a few here. Um, uh, there's kind of a pattern to the bands. And uh, so 40 meters is uh, generally active for all 24 hours. Uh, 20 meters is uh, usually active during the day, but it can extend into the evening. Uh, 15 and 10 um, is uh, generally a day band, but it all, uh, <clears throat> there are exceptions to that and, and winter field day might be one of those exceptions <laughs> that uh, uh, th things extend into the uh, evening. Uh, 80 meters is pretty dead in the daytime. That's for sure, and uh, but it comes alive at night. So, um, th th this is things you learn uh, about the HF bands. They're all a little bit different, and um, so uh, a winter field day would be a good teacher about what is open when, and you can make contacts on any band, uh, so six meters is a possibility, even two meters and up. Uh, the only thing you can't do is use a uh, repeater. So uh, actually uh, operating on as many bands as possible will help your, your score. And what we call the wart bands like 30 meters and 17 meters and 12 meters uh, are not allowed for uh, 
for this event and contest in general. Uh, so people uh, may have their favorite mode. Uh, it may be phone, it may be digital, it may be CW. Well, all those are uh, uh, good for winter field day. Um, with the exception of FT8 and FT4, uh, those don't support the uh, exchange for a contact. And um, so they're not really considered good emergency modes. <laughs> so, so winter field day uh, excludes, excludes those. However, ARRL field day includes them, so. But um, um, phone, um, uh, a, a lot of people uh, are very comfortable with phone. Uh, it's a little challenging because the bands can get really congested on phone. And um, um, I think uh, they give you uh, one point for a phone contact where uh, CW and digital is two points. And I think the reason they do that is to help relieve the congestion on the phone portions of the band. Um, so uh, before FT8, uh, when I about a decade ago, when I got into back into amateur radio, uh, PSK31 was the thing, kind of like FT8 is now. And <coughs> it turns out that PSK31 is. Uh, comes alive <laughs> uh, during winter field day. And it's a very good way to make those contacts and it's two points each. Uh, not everybody does CW, but uh, it's an excellent mode for contest. And uh, it's two points each. What about uh, RTTY that's allowed, right? Uh, RTTY is allowed, yeah. Um, so, um, uh, I believe that would be considered a digital mode. And so really it's all digital modes except FT8 and FT4. Uh, JS8 call is allowed if you'd like to use that. Well, we'll get to it in a moment, uh, but uh, you don't have to use all three modes, but it, but if you're interested in, in um, increasing your points, uh, using all three modes will help your score, as we'll see. All right, and the reason uh, the band and the mode help your score is there's a band slash mode multiplier. So if you work 40 meters uh, CW and 40 meters sideband, uh, that, that's a two multiplier. If you throw in digital, that's three. So, um, and then when you go to another band, for each mode you work on that band, it adds a multiplier. So actually you may spend most of your time on 40 and 20 meters, but it certainly pays to go to some of the other bands uh, because uh, even if you make one contact, it will be a multiplier. And we'll see the equation <laughs> where they calculate the score in a moment. Let's see. Can you can you do uh, multiple stations or a single operator two stations or something like that? Or? Well, uh, uh, you can uh, have uh, um, one transmitter or multiple transmitters, but uh, only one transmitter is allowed on a band and mode. 
Okay. Uh, so you, you, um, you mean I couldn't have them both on 40 at the same time? Well, you couldn't have them both on 40 uh, CW, <laughs> but you could have one on 40 CW and one on 40 phone. Kind of, kind of like regular field day. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like regular field day, but uh, regular field day doesn't have the this multiplier. <laughs> but, oh, okay. But uh, and well, also, got, also I, I, yeah, I can I, I can operate two stations at the same time just so they're on different bands. Is that what it is? Yeah, different, different band and mode. Well, different. They can't be on the same band and mode at the same time, but they okay. can be on the same band, different modes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now it turns out um, uh, sometimes for reasons of interference and so forth, it's, it may be <clears throat> a problem operating uh, two transmitters on a band, but doesn't mean it's not possible. It's just something to watch out for. So <clears throat> this kind of stuff, uh, it, it takes a while for it to sink in. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, but you'll see how it works. And the logging programs um, uh, kind of handle it for you. Let's see, uh, briefly, uh, power sources. Well, you could use commercial mains, a uh, battery or a generator or um, in, any one of those alternatives, but a um, non-commercial power uh, gives you a 500 point bonus. So uh, you may, if you want the bonus, you could operate battery or generator. Uh, you also might use solar power, uh, particularly to uh, uh, charge your batteries. Um, and uh, it seems like uh, when I operate that pretty much all the power I'm using is being replaced by the solar panel until nighttime. And then um, uh, you're straight off the battery till the sun comes back up. All right, a detail, your logging computer does not have to be on battery for the bonus. But if you're doing a digital mode, then I believe that computer uh, has to be powered by your, your non-commercial source if you want to get that. Bonus. Yeah, some of the some of the radios have the program built in like my 7600 has psk 31 built in i don't need a extra computer yeah that's that's right uh so uh it's not mandatory to have a a computer uh your uh rf output power well, don't use a linear amplifier or uh, 1500 watts because uh, uh, 100 watt is the uh, max RF power for this uh, event. And it's good that you don't have to compete against people who are running 1000 watts. So um, anything but QRP is a 1x power multiplier. Uh, QRP, which is uh, low power, is a 2x power multiplier. And uh, uh, their definition of QRP is 10 watts for phone and 5 watts for CW. Um, uh, their write-up of the rules does not say what it is for digital. But... Uh, uh, my assumption is that it's uh, uh, 10 watts for digital, although, well, you know, they didn't say what it was. And uh, I think we probably need to send them an email and remind them that they really should clarify that. So I think uh, 
I think the digital is going to go under the five watts with the CW. Well, we'll just have to yeah, get them to clarify that. But yeah, you know, but, Jim, if they don't ever say, it's whatever we say. A hundred watts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but uh, uh, they're good people. It just seems that in the text that they wrote that somehow it left out. It didn't specify digital explicitly, so. All right, well, um, all contests have what's known as an exchange. Uh, so uh, you as a station wanna work as many other stations as you can, but for it to be a valid contact, you'll need to uh, exchange some information. And uh, <clears throat> for winter field day, uh, the exchange is built from some information. <laughs> and uh, the first part is the class, which is a number of simultaneous transmitters. And for most, most of us, under one call sign, we have one transmitter. But if we had a setup where we had, we could operate two transmitters at the same time, uh, 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 our class would be two. So for most people, the class is gonna be one, but some groups may have uh, two transmitters or three or 20 transmitters. So, um, the next part is category, and they've made a, uh, a little change to that, but O is for outdoors. Uh, uh, so, you know, if you're at a campsite park or whatever, uh, maybe in a little tent that's not insulated, that would be considered outdoors. Uh, what, if, what if what if you're in your backyard? Is that still outdoors, or is that uh, the, uh, that is outdoors? Okay. Yeah. Back porch is outdoors. Yeah. Okay. Um, I is for indoors. An example would be if you rented a cabin and uh, it was snowing outside and everything, but you were very comfortable <laughs> in the cabin. Well, you would be in a I category, uh, but uh, it's not indoors at your house. It's indoors away from your home. Okay, if you're operating from home, it's H or hotel. And then they added this, uh, if you're operating from a vehicle, uh, that's M for mobile. And uh, 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 I didn't put mobile temporary or whatever, but if you were in a fancy trailer, uh, uh, they can cons also consider that mobile. Now, uh, this is where uh, you need to go back and read the rules <laughs> and uh, critique them. Um, uh, to make sure that uh, you understand it. But most of it's obvious. There's a little bit on this mobile that might need some interpretation. Uh, well, let's, let's say uh, you have a, a van, you know, a regular van, and uh, you can put your rig in the van, you know, you got a little chair, yeah. put your rig on a little table and everything, and you run your, and you're parked in your backyard. So we're okay. So right now we're outdoors mobile. Okay, but then you run your coax over to your eighty-foot tower where your where your big five-band uh, well, two thousand-dollar antenna is. Well, uh, what do I? What am I then? Well, uh, that's allowed. It but, is. But but you'll sounds good. <laughs> you'll see later. You'll be missing out on some bonus points. Oh, okay, okay. There, there are uh, bonus points for uh, putting up an antenna uh, for this event. Oh, so, wait a minute. There's a difference between putting up the antenna and actually using it. Does it actually say you have to use the antenna? Oh, 
<laughs> well, I don't know about and that. That could stick up any antenna out there. <laughs> well, it's not. It's using. It's not sticking it up. Does it say that though? Well, I have a slide on that. Okay. All right. So, so we'll we'll be to it shortly. I don't. I don't want to cheat, but I don't want to miss any options. Right. Either. Well, as Ashley says, you want to compete with the rules. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so your part of the exchange is your class plus your category and your section. <laughs> so um, uh, most of the time, I'm a, a one Oscar, uh, one transmitter station and outdoors. And then you have your ARRL slash Radio Amateur of Canada section. Uh, so uh, if I was in Florida, well, Bay County would be northern Florida. <laughs> and um, in Alabama, I'd be Alabama. And we're going to, uh, I've got a slide on the sections. So, um, so you have your info and the other stations has their info. And so you might do something like this. Uh, if Chris was in Canada in, and I heard Chris calling CQ, I would say, I might say VA3 ECO, this is N4KGL. We are one Oscar Northern Florida uh, NFL. And uh, Chris, I think I got that, I don't know. Uh, and then um, uh, Chris would say N4KGL, this is uh, VA3ECO, QSL, copy R1 Oscar, uh, Ontario North, O-N-N. -N. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So... Uh, now that would be in a phone contact, but you do the equivalent of this for uh, CW and uh, digital, and you may have, in any case, you may have this information in a memory, either a, a digital, a memory for your digital or macro uh, or, or a, a Peer memory or or a voice memory. You can put the information in if you want to uh, give your voice a rest. So, um, but anyway, know your section, and you'll be getting the other guy's section and putting that. Well, the whole thing, his class category and his section, and you'll be putting that in your log to get credit for the contact. All right, well, these are the abbreviations, but uh, <clears throat> I wanna note that in Canada, they've kind of reorganized their sections. So they have some changes and uh, the N3 FJ, N3 FJP software has already taken those changes into account. So uh, one thing to note, uh, some states like Alabama has just one section, but uh, Florida has several, uh, Northern Florida, South Florida, West Central Florida, uh, and uh, uh, in California, they have a bunch of sections. And so <clears throat> the ARRL has a list of these sections. You want, might want to print them out for reference. Um, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> this is a screen from the logger program and it will actually show you your coverage of sections. So, uh, any questions at this point? Uh, 
it is worth noting that Mexico is MX. And then a DX station, you would put in DX. Of course, you can tell what country they're from by their prefix, but, but you would put in DX. So you can work DX stations uh, in this event. All right, well, it's not absolutely necessary for you to keep a log if you just want to give pe people points. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't have to keep a log at all. Uh, you could keep a paper log, um, but uh, it, uh, you're encouraged to turn in a score. It's not required. But, so to facilitate that uh, using a, a laptop or some kind of device with a logging program is helpful. And it seems to be the consensus, particularly for beginners, that the N3 FJP software is easy to use and works very well. And they have a winter field day version. So it already understands <laughs> all the rules. It will calculate your score. And when you're ready to submit a score, it will generate a Cabrillo file uh, for you to uh, upload to the winter field day site or send it in an email. Um, so uh, I highly recommend this software. It, it's not totally free, but it's inexpensive. And you can pay a little extra and get all their software for about $60. Um, and that lasts a lifetime uh, for all the contests that they support and they support them all. <laughs> so. Greg, it's it's yeah. not it's not it won't work on Linux, correct? I think you're right. So it's got a fault, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Windows or Mac. so if you're going to use Linux, you would want to look for an alternative. Um, now, um, um, so I think Ken, one year, uh, you let your uh, well. No, never mind. Well, <clears throat> if you're using digital modes, a lot of those that those with digital modes, um, uh, sometimes your app digital mode application will keep a log. So you may need to do some manipulation later to get your log turned in. So uh, it's doable, and uh, can do you? know of a a good alternative um i think i know one <laughs> oh well i, I think know, i don't really pro probably qrz is probably what i would use yeah well i think the hammers software may be available on yeah, linux yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've yeah. got that too. <laughs> and in fact they um uh, they support winter field day. Yeah, that's, so, that's right. I've forgotten about it. So, um, um, so I, I need to uh, um, widen the scope here. Uh, and and uh, as an alternative to N3FJP, you could take a look at the a H A M R S software. Um, now that software, uh, I don't think it has an interface to the rig, but you can keep up. And the interface to the rig is to keep up with the band and mode, but you can do that manually. So, well, as you, get into this, you try a product and 
and uh, see how it works for you. Uh, but uh, I think most people would be happy with N3 F FJP. Okay. Um, just hang on a sec, Greg. There is yeah. a, a K6 GTE. Okay. K6 uh, Golf Tango Echo Winterfield a logger written in Python that uh, some guy has tested on Linux, uh, Raspberry Pi operating system, and Windows 10. Okay. It, it works. So I have no idea what it's like. Oh, they got a screenshot. Yeah, so I, I'm looking at a GitHub site. So you just Google uh, K6 Gulf Tango Echo Winterfield Day Logger and you'll probably get there. Yeah, it actually looks yeah. pretty clean. Actually, it looks a little bit like the N4 <laughs> FJP one, except we're not as colorful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's there's something to check out. Yeah. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Sure. Yeah. There are so many loggers. <laughs> That's <laughs> um and um uh, I'm uh, probably if you're used to N1 MM, it probably supports Winterfield Day also. So so um I'm just giving you a good place to to look and um uh but you you know you're not tied down to this software. There there are alternatives. So this is a lot of details. Yeah, Some and mm does work. I use it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this kind of end of the details, but uh, it does cover that uh, CW and digital modes count as two points each, uh, and phone is one point. Um, uh, it's got the power output multipliers. And I believe that I think field A double R L field day is more generous for QRP. Um, I think, and it seems like uh, there's been a change in this area. But the way I read it, uh, QRP is two x, and um, uh, I. Uh, Somewhere, if you're between Q, if you're above QRP and less than 100, then uh, it's 1x. And uh, uh, actually, uh, I've I've had success using QRP <laughs> for uh, field day and winter field day. So uh, it's a definitely an option to consider, and it looks like you can make half the context. Uh, for the same number of points. So, and here's the multiple transmitter limitation. Use of more than one transmitter on a single band and mode is prohibited. Uh, band multipliers, uh, we did talk about that. Um, and you can work a station. Uh, once, well, you can't work a station more than once on the same band and mode. Well, you can work them, but it will, will only count as one, the first, it will only count as one contact. But you can work a station on a different mode or a different band and mode, and you can work them again. So there'll be a lot of that going on, like, I might work somebody on CW and then come over and work them on phone, work them on digital. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but this band multiplier is something that makes winter field day interesting uh, because it can really pump up your score. And I know that Chris was chasing one contact on 15 meters <laughs> with the uh, fingers crossed, you know, and for a long time, for, for a long time. But if we <laughs> got that contact, uh, now uh, calculating the points, 
Um, your logger will probably take care of this, but but uh, uh, it's QSO points. I'm not sure they exactly spell that out there. Times your power multiplier times your band and mode multiplier uh, equals your total points. Now, does this have to be about points? No, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's kind of nice to keep up with the points and uh, uh, and uh, so it's it makes it fun. Uh, I don't think any of us are trying to get the most points because <laughs> Uh, there's always somebody that's uh, a bit more of a contest operator. Uh, uh, but, and, uh, of course, you could be that guy. But but anyway, uh, this is pretty much a copy and paste out of the rules for scoring. And bonus points, um, alternative power is... This helps your score, obviously. So you calculate your points and then add bonus points. And alternative power, uh, if you use a battery or a generator, you can get 500 points in lieu of commercial power. Um, if you're outdoors in the elements, you can get 500 points. If you're away from home, you get 500 points. And here's the antenna. You may claim 500 points if you're setting up an antenna just for winter field day. If, <clears throat> if you're using a pre-installed antenna, you may not get this 500 points. So, you may want to get a lawyer and uh, <laughs> figure this out, but uh, well, anyway, uh, you read the rules when you get around to turning in your points, but these things kind of uh, influence you to maybe to operate outdoors and to use alternative power and, and to put up an antenna. And uh, another way to get 500 bonus points is to make a satellite, a successful satellite QSO. At least one. And uh, actually, uh, it's just for the bonus. It doesn't really add to your points or your band and mode multiplier. And uh, generally, uh, uh, I know on a ARRL field day, they basically tell you in the rules that one contact's enough. <laughs> um, but, um, <clears throat> well, anyway, read the rules, but uh, making at least one <laughs> will give you 500 points. And then we have the mobile, which is 250 points. So I guess you lose a little bit if you're in the mobile, but it has the bonus. So it, it looks like if you're just if you're in a mobile, but the mobile is not moving. You cannot get the uh, vehicle uh, yep. antenna 500 point there. <laughs> but, but if you're in the mobile, you can get the vehicle mounted antenna for 250 points if you are moving or roving. Well, I, does that mean the vehicle is moving or roving? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm moving or roving. Well, wait now. Uh, actually, <laughs> I have a conflict. Any I haven't even read that sentence. It's a conflict between antenna and mobile down there. Yes. One says one thing and the, okay. other, one, and the other one counter. Well, oh, uh, that's not true. Something that I, um, that's in the rules and it says if there's a question about the rules to contact them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. 
So uh, I think I know what their answer would be. Yeah. The, yeah. The vehicle must be moving. We don't care whether you move or not. Yeah. Or well, I guess the vehicle's able to move. In other words, yeah, you don't you don't have a big uh, you know beam on a tower there. You're using a hamstick or something like that that could move. Yeah, because hmm. I don't think they're advocating you should be doing this on the road. <laughs> no, uh, if you're mo if you're mobile, if you're doing mobile like you're 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 in your car in your backyard, you're not driving. That's right. mobile. Okay? Yeah. But you can't use the antenna that is permanently mounted on the car. <laughs> well, you, you can use no, it, but you can't get any bonus points for that. It must, the bonus points only come from antennas set up specifically for. Uh, well, like. now, if you, um, yeah. Yeah, it says under antennas, installed antennas on vehicle. Right, so mean, that, which, a, means, a which means. Which means. Which means. You lose the antenna bonus. But you that's right. Energy. That's right. But if Mobile. you wait, if you wait until field day and you stick that ham stick on a on a piece of uh, uh, aluminum rod in the ground and you operate on that way, I think you would yeah. get the the, uh, the apple well, up an antenna for this field day. You know, they probably didn't think of all these consequences. No, but. I think I think they thought this up after a few beers and they weren't really paying attention. Yeah, they they, they hadn't right. run up against us old timers yet. <laughs> all right. Well, read the rules and if it's uh if there are conflicts or in it um or something you don't like, let uh uh send them a question and see see what their answer is okay well i was going to continue with uh operating styles this really applies to um, to pretty much all contests in amateur radio uh there are uh, two operating styles one it may be hunt and pounce or search and pounce and there'll be a lot of stations calling CQ and you can tune around and find one and you can give them a call. And uh, uh, you may or may not be successful getting them, <laughs> but uh, let's say you did get them, uh, then you can tune around, find somebody else and work them but they're calling CQ and you're just calling them and, and giving them your exchange. So, um, uh, but, uh, so you may be just one of many stations calling them. So it may take some effort to get in if it's a big pileup. Now, the pileup is not calling you. You're just part of the pileup calling them. But anyway, uh, um, a lot of people use that style of operating and are comfortable with it. It may not be as efficient as doing what is called running. And that's finding a spot and calling CQ. Uh, people call you, and then you call CQ again, and you just keep doing that. You may do it for 24 hours. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know, but I think those are the stations that really run up the points because eventually everybody will get to them. <laughs> so, but two styles, you'll hear it going on and, and, uh, uh, if the band isn't too busy, you may want to call CQ yourself, and then uh, you may get a big string of contacts. So it's your choice. You can play it by ear and uh, see how you do. So that cat is for bots, and he's not. He's not watching. So. <laughs> All right. Well. Um, uh, people can operate individually in the field or at home. 
They can operate as a group. Um, um, in many situations, but um, uh, it used to be that uh, before COVID uh, that uh, you would have big operations with lots of transmitters um, and lots of people, but uh, COVID uh, uh, kind of changed that. So, um, and that would usually be a club doing that. But um, during COVID, uh, they came up with the idea that you could operate individually, but contribute your score to a club. So uh, you're calculating your score just based on what you're doing, but you can identify your club and then uh, they'll uh, add up the score for a club. So it's like you were in a big group, but you're actually operating individually or in smaller groups. So, so anyway, if you're, um, I would suggest that if you want to give your points to the Panama City ARC, that all of us spell it out exactly the same way. So I suggest using Panama City ARC, exactly as shown. But um, um, uh, so this option still there, even though COVID seems to be less of a problem than it was, so. Okay, well, if you uh, are at a, a campground that has multiple transmitters, uh, there could be interference among the transmitters. Uh, so that's just something you have to work out one way or the other. Um, <clears throat> may not be a big problem. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, you may want to coordinate with your neighbors. Now, uh, they could be on the same band <laughs> and the same mode with you, but it might overload your receiver and, um, and maybe neither one of the stations could really operate. So uh, this is just something um, uh, to work out with uh, the group and um, uh, you, you could use, in general, maybe using band pass filters uh, is helpful to keep harmonics and uh, uh, phase noise and so forth uh, uh, from causing interference in other people interfering with you. So, so uh, and it may be that you're operating and there's nobody within miles of you and then this just won't be a problem. So, so uh, uh, the bottom line is uh, mark winter field day on your calendar. And um, I tried to do this a uh, month ahead <laughs> uh, to give everybody time. Um, uh, we didn't talk much about operating at home, but you could operate at home and you could operate with a battery and you could get that bonus. Uh, you could operate in your backyard <laughs> as Jim uh, talks about. Uh, and so you have a plethora of options to participate. You could also uh, uh, join in with um, uh, a, a, uh, another operator um, and you might not bring anything, but you might be able to operate uh, their setup, uh, be a second operator or a logger and all that. So, um, 
there's many options. Um, and I, as I mentioned before, uh, the more of us that get on and operate, you know, the better we can make Panama City ARC look uh, uh, when you total up the score. So, uh, <clears throat> so over this month, I think plans will develop. Uh, Panama City ARC and the ARIES group uh, could do something. I can't speak for those plans right now, but um, I, I heard they might use the Bay County EOC or the, uh, it's a Gulf Coast State College facility out there. Uh, they may use that. Uh, I believe uh, Bob KK4DIV is going to be at Pine Log. Uh, other folks might be out there uh, at Pine Log. And um, uh, I've kind of changed my plan. I'm, I'm um, looking at operating from um, East Bank Corps of Engineers Campground <laughs> on Lake Seminole. Uh, uh, there's one site there that I've got reserved that has plenty of room to operate. So at this point, uh, do we have uh, questions, uh, comments from our group here uh, assembled on Zoom? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Ken. It's just a reminder. And um, uh, so um, uh, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to get into uh, HF operating. And, and you may not be a contester per se, but you'll get a taste of contesting uh, with Winterfield Day, so. All right, well, with that, we'll go back to the group. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>